Well, what you said before was that your experience of life indicates that um, there has to be. There has to be. More experience. I just told you. My experience has led me to the conclusion that there must be something after life. Like I said, it's subjective. Uh, but how, uh, it's and I, yeah, it's subjective. I'm thinking like that, based so, on everything that I have seen. Uh, now, so how do you get from the, your experience to that understanding? Very easy. I see life yeah. when I see a baby being born. Yeah. Yeah. What do I? What am I seeing? Seen a, a life form. Being. A life form. Um, a life form or seen it is a life form. Yeah. Okay. Right through time, some will get older, yep. some won't reach 20, some won't reach the next day. Yes. And what we call the functioning of the, uh, the biological functioning of the body ceases. Yep. I'm saying to you, I've seen all that. Now I've come to the conclusion that, wait a minute, there's this body. Yeah. You know, when I said uh, my experience. I was stood next to a dead body. I looked at the body and I looked at myself. What is the difference between the two of us? One's dead, one's alive. What does that mean? One, the biological functions that stops. No more breathing, no more heartbeats, no more consciousness, we assume. We assume, excellent. But there's an issue here which we haven't considered. Everything that that human body is made up of, I have. Correct? Yep. So what has disappeared from there? Function. No, no. Function is part of everything that the body is made of. No, so if we, if, we are to, if, dead. <laughs> if we break it down to its atomic level, what's the difference between the body and me? If you're not going to look at the function, then materially the same. It's the same. Superb. But if we are composed of the same substance yeah. as the dead body, what makes us different? Uh, as I said, the functionality. No, no, no. The function is based on something. It has yeah. to be, otherwise that wouldn't die. Functionality is based on, well... On yeah, what? Well, yeah, the material conditions and whether or not the whole system is exhausted to the point of death. But here we are again. You are, you are telling me what I just said. I am composed of atoms. Do you agree? And molecules. Yep. Yep. Is it composed of atoms and molecules? Yep. What's the difference? Well, as I said, though, you're functioning still. You are forgetting. Yep. Atoms and molecules are inanimate. They're inanimate? Yeah. When they're composed together in the right structure, they... Uh, yeah, they, they do what? Do they create what we define as life? They are what life is made of. No, no. What you are saying is what you understand. What I'm asking is on a technical level. If I am saying to you that the body is composed of atoms, molecules, etc. Right. They are all inanimate. Do we agree? As atoms and molecules, yes. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. They are put together. Yeah. Just like the earth. It has got the same kind of components. Do we agree? It does, yes. What makes us different? Structure. So are you saying that if we were to put the structure together the way we do, we will see life? See. Well, why not? Yes. Well, all the tests have been done and that doesn't happen. That is why what we consider to be life has not been created in a test tube. Okay. So you think the vital essence of life is... Ah, no, I don't think. What I'm saying is, look, it is now leading me to a conclusion here. And the conclusion is that what we consider to be death may not necessarily be the be-all and end-all of life. And yeah, the evidence the is... Of that functionality of that body. Superb. How did the function begin? Yeah. Began at conception. Ah, ah. Remember, you have to now go back to the time when it was only composed of atoms and molecules which were inanimate. Okay. When did life arise? At, um, at the Genesis day one. <laughs> you are ba basically repeating what I've just said you cannot do. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying to you is if atoms and molecules are inanimate, yep. what makes them alive? The structure. That's what Superb. So 
the test that the scientists have done, yeah? yeah. Uh, you're familiar with pasteurization, Louis Pasteur. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, okay, anyway, yeah. Uh, how they, they, they thought that life was, it, it arose by itself. Um, like spontaneous generation. Yeah, until they, they did the test and they found, well, actually there was bacteria, there's whatever, right. but it never arose spontaneously. Now the question is this, if life does not arise spontaneously, how do we define life? Spontaneous generation theory assumes that. Um, why was it dis you, why was it discarded? Well, it was shown to be false. It was shown that. Um, so now I want you to tell me of any test that you can remember, which tried to establish what that spark is, and if there is a spark, is it something that is limited? Um, Understanding is um, they've managed to recreate some amino acids from from the basic materials. When was this? I don't know, back in the sixties. Correct. And what happened subsequently? Because you are forgetting one very important aspect here. Well, they didn't make that every life. it didn't make life. Right. It was only amino acids. Okay. Right. Uh, the Miller-Urey experiment. Right. Okay. The question is, was it in controlled conditions? Was there an intelligence behind it? Intelligence, but just trying to recreate the... No, did it require intelligence? That time, not the first time around. <laughs> ah, so you, as far as you are concerned, everything that you see, including computer engineering, every design of a vehicle, everything that you see, you agree that it, it had intelligence behind it? Yeah. Except that what gives you the ability to be able to do all this was an accident. Accidents, you could put it like that, yeah. <laughs> and you logically think that is reasonable? Yes. Why? Because... I think you've, you've demonstrated that. Um, no, I'm asking you yeah. why. Why, um, well, why we don't need an intelligent creator. Why do you think it is reasonable? Why is it reasonable for yeah. life <laughs> to exist without a creator? <laughs> I said to you, everything around design of cars, everything, okay, you have no. Human no, no, no. Uh, but, yeah, excellent. You see, if something is brought to you, yeah? And it looks highly complicated, like a radio-controlled uh, vehicle, motor vehicle. Okay. Yeah? You look at it, and I insist to you, back in history, it suddenly came. Yeah. I can guarantee you, for 1,000 years we can stand here, you will not accept my proposition. Well, it's, it looks like sort of human-manufactured objects. It is designed. Yeah, human design. Does it require an intelligence behind it? Does an orange require an intelligence? It's part, it part of nature, so no. Does nature require intelligence? Not that I know. You don't know that. Are you familiar with the constants of the universe? Not in these are just in addition. Detail, but these, idea, yeah. <laughs> these are just in addition to all the other evidence. Okay. Okay. You find they will tell you that you know the positive and negative charge of the molecule uh, atoms. Okay, yeah, the subatomic particles. If they weren't at the rate that they are, the universe would not come into existence. They had to be just the right balance. Okay. Are you familiar with that? Um, no. Vaguely, I need to look into that a bit more. You need to. Yeah. And, and honestly, Jason, a I'll, I'll, just to conclude, Roger, Sir Roger Penrose's book okay. about the universe, it's about 1,000 pages. Uh, okay, that's a lot of, okay, well, I'll have some time um, this month. Uh, excellent, Jason. Look, okay. the way I see things, death is literally a second away from us. It could be. Not could be, it is. I can guarantee you that. It is a yeah. second away. When I say death is a second away, I'm talking about the whole of humanity. Okay. Yeah? Literally, there is a, a very disturbing video somebody had sent me. Yeah? Yeah. In which... There's a, there's a road and a truck is coming. There's a gentleman crossing the road after the truck 
and he's walking like this and there's a car reversing unfortunately the car reversed at speed took him and crushed him dead disturbing video it is a disturbing video yeah literally two seconds before do you think he knew he was going to be dead no now you and it's the same with all of us literally we don't know yes people will say well if you go to a doctor and sadly he gives you a cancer diagnosis he will tell you three months and bye-bye yeah that happens okay but the amazing thing even with that is that the way the human body is that you can actually calculate things and yet we insist that there's no intelligence behind it that is illogical and irrational however going back to what we said read his book yeah and then and then yes roger penrose sir roger penrose and then also look at what are known as the universal constants yeah how the earth is located in a particular region of space yeah why the sun is only the distance it is yeah now a lot of people we call it the fine tuning of the universe i'm sure you you've heard of it yeah okay but you need to look at those and don't look at only those look at the rest of the available available evidence and i can grant you one thing jason you will come to the one single conclusion that there is a supreme intelligence behind all this and that supreme intelligence has communicated communicated with the cre with the creation via what we call the message from the creator in this instance it is the quran now here's what i would suggest honestly jason go and do some more study and we are usually here four to six weeks every four to six weeks yeah come back to me yeah i want you to do that about oh thank you you can contact me anytime here jason yeah okay and and i would love i would love you to come up with you know hard questions yeah okay. in relation to whether there is a supreme intelligence or not my conclusion sincerely jason looking at all the available available evidence it would be highly illogical and irrational to conclude that everything came as a result of an accident okay yeah okay yeah, i understand your point of view I'll excellent good you. it was a pleasure meeting you sir it's me. yeah jason like i said we we are usually back every four to six weeks yeah. uh the send me an email address send me an email okay so i'll keep you informed of whenever we are coming okay. and i would love to meet you again once you have done some more further reading okay interesting excellent jason thank you so much assalamu alaikum my name is vegar and i'm a norwegian muslim convert i cannot express how grateful i am for allah to have guided me to islam in my country there are no islamic schools or dawa centers that fully operate in my language a lot of the islamic programs here are in urdu Arabic and Somali and I don't understand these languages. We new Muslims need a place where we, we really can learn Islam. Alhamdulillah Allah guided me to the Dawah organization Islam Net who helped me stay firm in my religion. We are now raising funds to establish a Norwegian Masjid and Dawah Center that will educate our people about Islam in the Norwegian language. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Whoever builds a masjid for Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. If you take part in this project, you will inshallah be rewarded for all the new Muslims who learn about Islam and all of the Muslims who learn to give da'wah and every single person who accepts Islam through this center. This will inshallah be an endless ongoing charity for you and let's not forget Allah will inshallah build for you a palace in Jannah. As a Norwegian Muslim, Norway is my country and dawah to these people is my responsibility. And you are my family. Please donate for the sake of Allah and build for yourself a house in Jannah. And whatever you give, Allah will give you more in return. And please click on the share button so you can get the reward of everyone who follows you in donating for this masjid. May Allah reward you.